the image and picture component in Astro give you a ton of power right out of the box. But there are three ways I think they could be improved, and I want to go over it in this advanced tutorial. Number one, responsiveness. Two, creating some kind of placeholder. And finally, three, making sure that you're not rebuilding and re-downloading images for your users every time they come to your site. You ready? Let's go. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. I should mention up front here that this is more of an advanced tutorial. I'm assuming you already know how to use both Astro and the Astro image component. We've got a couple things here. This local file, what we're pulling in from our assets, and then a remote file from Cloudinary. And I'm displaying both of these using the Astro image component. Now, you'll remember for remote images, you need to infer the size or directly give it a size. So I've already done that. And in order for it to process and actually change remote images, you also need to add some kind of authorization here in the image object. I've done this by pointing it to the domain res.cloudinary.com, which is where that lives. Don't use HTTPS. It will actually error out on you or it won't work. So you have to just use kind of the base root domain here. Okay, so with that said, we've kind of got this all working for us, but I want to point out three different ways that we can improve this. So right over here, the first one is that these are not actually responsive. You can see that if I come over here and we inspect this at different sizes. Normally, you'd want to see a smaller image being loaded in here. And as you get bigger, it would load in bigger images. That way, you're only loading the image size that you actually need. However, this is not taking place. Every single size is getting the same image. So that's the first thing we want to fix. And actually, we have access to it already in a couple of options. We can either pass along densities or we can pass along both widths and sizes. Now you have to pass these along together. So let me go ahead and grab this right here. We're just gonna use both of these and I'm gonna pass it in both here and here. Now these are both using my image dot. So let's change these. I'm just gonna use the local image here of cabin for both of these to say that's the max width it should be. So we're saying, give me widths, give me sizes. And with those things defined, it'll actually generate this source set for you. So now if I come back over here and let's look at the network tab, I filtered by images only and if I reload right here, oh, real quick, there we go. You can see that these are much smaller sizes. So very small, and as I get bigger, it's going to get larger and load in a bigger one, et cetera, et cetera. Now you can set those however you want, but you'll notice here that it's actually producing a variety of different images. And we can really see that if we go ahead and build the project. So let me come over here, npm run build. And what we see is that it's going to produce a bunch of images. You can see them right here. And I can inspect that if I jump over this way to the dist folder, you can see under Astro, I've got all these different images for different sizes, and they've even produced WebPs and stuff like that. I'm not sure why they're not showing. There we go. All right. Um, so what we've done now is provided true responsiveness. So that's the first issue solved. However, there's an issue there, isn't there? I have to remember to add this to every single image component, and then I have to make sure I've set it to the right width and height for what it should be. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm going to forget to do that, and I need to find some kind of way to ensure that I do this. Well, there's a new experimental flag in Astro that allows you to do this. So I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna get rid of this so it's kind of as you were. And then I'm gonna come over to experimental flags. Right here, this experimental responsive images, I don't know how soon this will be in production. Just make sure you always check the docs here because things can change between recording of the video and whenever they update this to be live. You'll notice I just need to add something to the my Astro config. So let's do that over here. We'll do it up top, Astro config experimental responsive images true. Now, in order to actually set responsive images, you need to do a few things. You need to add an image layout. Now, what this tells it is how it should produce those extra images. We'll see a really good visual example of this in a second. For now, just know that we're gonna choose the constrained option. So under the image object, we're gonna add the experimental layout constrained. And this will tell it how to produce that for us. Now, with that done, We've removed the other responsiveness things. Let's make sure we restart our dev terminal and I come here and refresh. And notice I've got responsive images now being produced for me automatically. As I get to bigger screen sizes, it will slowly load in these bigger images. And notice it's produced them at way finer breakpoints than I typically would because it's just a lot of work. Well, now it does it for you automatically. So as you get bigger, it's producing bigger images and loading those in for you automatically. So that's the first problem actually fixed using this experimental flag because I don't have to remember to add them. And if I have to add them manually, they're just not going to happen. Okay, the second issue I want to look at actually is involving throttling. So if I come over here, we, let's pick a slower version. If I go to load these in, you'll notice I get no placeholders. It's just a white, huge blank space. And then slowly it will load in. Now, a lot of people will visit your site with this kind of network 
connectivity. Maybe they're traveling somewhere or maybe they're in a place without great network or Wi-Fi and you can see that it's just, it's not a great experience. Wouldn't it be great if we could have something slowly load in? Well, there is to this second problem, a fix called unpick. And it's actually created by Matt Kane, who's now joined the Astro Core team, which my sneaking suspicion is this is why we're getting so many image improvements in Astro. But if I come over here to get started, we can see that it's not just for Astro, it's for literally any framework, which also means if you're using React or Vue or something like that within Astro, you can download kind of two versions, one for Astro and one for React and use them in either types of components. Now it does a lot of things, but essentially it will parse your image provider and then automatically generate images for you. And there's a bunch of other cool things as well. Let's go ahead and make this bigger and come over to the Astro guide. And you'll see here that this is exactly what we want. It generates responsive image tags that follow best practices with correct source set sizes and styles. It detects image URLs for most CDNs like Cloudinary, for instance, or CMSs, wherever you're hosting that. And it can resize those images without doing any kind of build step. You'll remember when we built locally, it was actually generating all those files. It doesn't have to do that. So the first thing we need to do is actually install it. So let me come over here. We'll kill the dev server and install this. Now notice that this has two parts. It has its own image component, which you don't have to use to get a lot of the benefits here. And it also has an Astro image service. This is what does a lot of the magic for you. And then you get a couple of extra bonuses here if you use the image component. As you'll see, we need to add an image service down here within our image object within our config. So I'll come over here, let's add this. And this image service here should pull in from unpick Astro service, all right? And if you don't see that, you can just copy and paste it from the docs right here. Now you'll notice we've got a couple of things. We can provide a fallback service, although it should be able to identify that we're using Cloudinary in that one instance. And then we also can pass along placeholders. Now placeholders are only used for remote images. I'm not exactly sure why that is, but it only works for remote images. And then here's this layout, same options here, constrained, constrained, full width or fixed. We saw that a moment ago, and I wanna look at that in a second here. But for now, just know that we're gonna pass along this entire object. Let me grab all of this. We'll drop this in like this. And I'm gonna change this to Cloudinary. Now it should be able to audit detect this anyhow, but now we've actually set it here as well. Now we've got both placeholder and layout. I wanna talk about those one after the other. So if we come over here, let's see, there's a demo where you can kind of see the difference here. So what we're gonna do is provide either a dominant color like this, you can see it just picks the color from the image, a blur hash, and you can see that's a little bit better, or this low quality image placeholder. And you can see that that's just a low quality image, so it looks like it, and as the image loads in, it will fill in those gaps. Now this is the smallest to load, this is medium, and this is the largest to load, but obviously it looks the best as you're kind of loading in an image. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, let's see this, the second thing is this layout. Now, they've got this really nice visual here to show you what the different options are. You've got full width, where it will always try to take up the maximum width allowed. You've got constrained, which is what the default is and what I typically choose, and you've also got fixed. So in case you need a visual for what we just did in Astro, this is the same kind of idea. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and move back over this way. You'll notice that we don't have to use the Astro image component, but we can if we want to. So here they're just using the normal Astro image component, and just like that, it will take care of everything else. Now to make sure that we're not letting our experimental stuff get in the way, let me comment this out, and that way we know we're using Unpick instead. So I'll come over here and run the dev server. We'll open this up and refresh. And for some reason, this fallback is messing me up. Usually it detects it automatically, so let's get rid of that and see if that fixes it. Yeah, it did, okay. I'm not really sure what was going on there, but that's good now. Now notice we didn't actually change anything up. So we're still using the Astro image component and it gives us a lot of the advantages. So if I come back over here, you'll see that we actually have the source set being produced automatically and Unpick is doing that for us. Now Unpick also adds some extra stuff here. You'll notice it's actually adding a style tag to produce the best results right down here. See if I can stop clicking around. All right, so right here, it's producing the style tag where it's adding in a max width, a height and aspect ratio, and it's setting all that for me automatically. I don't have to do that. Now, if I jump back over to the docs, you're going to see that there's also an image component that gives you a bunch of extra stuff as well. So I'm going to use this instead, and it's basically a drop-in replacement. There are a couple of things you need to note. Number one, you can't use infer size anymore. That's an astro thing. But you can and must set a width and a height. You don't have to, but if you don't, it won't actually produce the source set, which is the, kind of the whole point of using this. So you need to pr provide a width and a height manually to say what you want it to be at its maximum, and then it will basically produce all the source set for you automatically. So let's come back over here like this, and we're also gonna see that we now get this nice blur hash as well coming in. Now, these over here are just the defaults. I can override it anytime I want to. 
So I could come in here with placeholder and I could set this to low quality image placeholder. And now you'll see it kind of loads in and it looks more like the image and then the image loads in. Now, how is it actually doing this? Great question. Let's come over here and look. You'll notice it's actually embedding a like actual data in here, a data image WebP. So it's base64 encoding an image and directly inserting it here. So this is going to load first. And then once these load in, they will load in over the top of it. All right, so problem one was we needed to add these responsive widths and heights. We've taken care of that in a couple different ways. Problem two was no placeholders. Unpick has solved that for us. Problem three is actually rebuilding and re-downloading every single image. Now you'll notice we've already actually improved that slightly. In fact, uh, let me come back here and we'll select this again. You'll notice that it's not going to actually rebuild every image. Here it's using the Cloudinary images and it knows the provider so it can actually use Cloudinary's magic sauce to set all these for us automatically. Now the final step here is to make sure that we're always using Cloudinary images so that like these images up here don't have to be built locally. Every time they're built locally, they're given a different hash. So every time somebody comes to your site, they have to re-download all the images again. So using an image service like Cloudinary means you've got a stable URL. Once somebody downloads it once, then it's cached on their device for whatever length of time you've set your caching. So that's the final improvement, making sure we're always using Cloudinary. And then you've got a bunch of extra advantages you can use with Cloudinary as well. Now, a few months ago, Cloudinary released their own Astro Cloudinary package. This does a ton of stuff. You can optimize images. We're going to see that in a second. You can provide transformations like changing the color or cropping or sizing or replacing the background or actually using generative AI kind of live as you're fetching this image. You can also create an upload widget that works with Astro really easily. It just uploads it directly to your account. And you can also produce social cards. So automatically producing OG images using Cloudinary. So this is S tier level. Now on top of that, you've also got a content loader where you can actually load in your image assets. I've done a video on that before and a bunch of other stuff like text overlays and image overlays. So now if you add this, not only do you get the CDN links, but you can do all these transformations using their own image component. So we're gonna replace the image component one more time. So let's come over here. I'm gonna grab this Cloudinary like this. I'm gonna install it. And then we need to do one more thing and that is we need to add a .env file. I'm gonna copy this right here. And then let's jump over this way. I'm gonna add a .env file. This essentially protects variables. It just happens to be that this is also where their uh, package will look for stuff. So we wanna make sure our public Cloudinary name is here and mine happens to be coding in public. And if you're not sure where yours is, you can actually just open up your Cloudinary account. It should show you right there. And that's what mine has done. Now, if you're using the upload widget, you need to include the API secret and key and all that kind of stuff. We're not gonna do that. So we don't need to, but just to note that you might need to. It's free to get started with. And if I jump over here, you'll see that we're gonna use this CLD image. Now it's a, essentially another drop-in replacement. There's a couple of differences though, and that you can add on top of what they've already done. Now, I should mention before we get started, look who's back, our old friend Unpick. It's actually just a wrapper around Unpick. So that means you also get all the benefits of Unpick and the benefits of Cloudinary. Now here, you'll notice I can't actually pass along placeholder. So it is a wrapper, but it doesn't give you access to everything that Unpick does. So now that we've got that set up, let's get this back up and running with npm run dev like that. And I'll jump back over here and you'll notice that we get our blur hash, it's still happening. And if I jump over here, you'll notice it's still producing all those same images, but I can go a step further. So back over here, let's look at some examples of what you can do. You have to pass along a public ID. This can either be just the kind of the end section of this, or it can be your whole URL that works as well. And you can pass along different sizes like we've seen, but here's where it gets crazy. You can add a bunch of extra stuff. So let's add this crop. Sure, let's do that. Let's just add all this and see what happens. All right, I think I missed just the last bit of that, but we can add that in manually, just like that. And it's giving me errors. I think it's because I have to actually enable, um, let's see, where are we at? Generative AI right here for the replacing background. So let's get rid of that. And I think this should work now. Okay, so notice this says out of this world on the image itself. All of that is done just from this little Cloudinary widget. Now that's not all you can do with this. If I jump back over this way, you'll notice there's a bunch of different examples. So for instance, if you've already added your own transformations via the URL, it, you can set it to not override that. Now by default, it always uses format auto and width auto. So those are kind of the big features in Cloudinary for me. I always add those to images. You don't have to add those anymore. It does that automatically for you. But in addition to that, there's a bunch of cool examples down this way. So here, notice they're removing the background. Here, they're changing the color of the background. There's an underlay that they're adding, a different image here. You can also use generative AI. 
here's where you have to actually enable that on your account. And I hadn't done that yet, I think. Uh, cropping and resizing, you can actually crop to people's faces in particular if you want to. Again, generative fill to fill the background. You can recolor the image if you want to as well. You can remove items from the image directly using this right here. So you pass it whatever prompt, and then you tell it to remove it. Again, this is using generative AI. So there's just a bunch of cool stuff you can do. And you can see I'm barely through this page. There's a bunch of filter and effects like blurring and grayscale, opacity, pixelating, tinting, image overlays, image underlays, text overlays, and they give a bunch of cool examples. Now, again, that's not all you get with Cloudinary. There's also uh, an OG image thing. I already mentioned this a second ago. There's an upload widget that's literally as easy as dropping in one line of code. You click upload and you can upload directly to your site. There's a video player. There's a bunch of cool helpers you can tap into as well if you want to. So there's just a ton you can do here. Now I should mention that even though this is wrapping Unpick, in order to get that blur effect, you do need to actually manually install Unpick as well. So if I come over here, you'll notice I'm still using everything that comes with Unpick and I'm telling it to use the blur hash, constrained. So you kind of get the best of both worlds if you use this. Now, for whatever reason, and maybe I'm just doing it wrong, but if I come over here and we look at node modules, we do have Cloudinary, let's see, Astro Cloudinary right here. If I come up top here, we still have Unpick and I've got Astro directly here. However, if I were to get rid of the one, so let's come back over here and let's get rid of Unpick which you shouldn't do like this, but that's fine. All right, and then I'm gonna delete all this node modules and let's just have it do it all over again. So here I'm gonna do npmi. Notice when I try to run it, it doesn't actually run it because it can't find unpick slash astro. What that means is if I come back over here, we look at these node modules, look what's missing, the core folder and the astro folder. I'm not sure why that is, but even though it's using it as a wrapper, it kind of strips those out. I'm guessing it just grabs what it needs to actually run it. Now, again, this is kind of inside baseball. We're at the end of the video, but I'll just talk through this in case this trips you up. I can get rid of this right here, this image service. I can also get rid of all this. And now if I were to run this and I come back over this way, it will work, but we won't get that blur hash effect. And I kind of like the blur hash. So in order to get that, you do need to actually manually also install Unpick Astro. And it will essentially add back in those folders that the Cloudinary widget doesn't seem to need to use. So if we come back here, you'll notice it still has pixels and placeholder, but it also is using Core and Astro as well. Now, it may be that there's a way to use this placeholder by itself because it's kind of its own package inside of the Cloudinary widget, but I haven't been able to figure that out. So I just wanted to mention that. That means I can come back over here and re-enable these, and this should work as before. So npm run dev. And just like that, we get the nice blur hash and we get all the other benefits of Cloudinary. Now, just one final thing, and that is that there is this content loader for Astro. I mentioned I've done a video on that before, and you can just load in your assets and even use them as like references between different collections. So I really like this Astro Cloudinary package because it includes so much from an upload widget to showing your images with a bunch of cool features to actually letting you load in stuff like per folder if you want to. Well, if you've made it this far, I trust you really enjoyed that deep dive on images. There's so much you can do here with Unpick and with Cloudinary. We've really just scratched the surface, but I hope this gives you more power to do whatever you want with images in your Astro site. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.